मुखम करोति वासनम मन पश्य Animal seem to have more power. Lion is so strong. Elephant is so strong. Birds can fly. So that is one thing. In terms of strength, human beings are weaker. But say human beings have better intellect. We can go lower. <coughs> But even there, if you see. human beings seem to have more problems due to the mind right rather than it being helpful because we are self judgment most of our problems seem to be from our mind only physical problems are there but our problems are seem to be centered on myself i am not good I am fat. I am dark. Nobody likes me. I am limited by knowledge. These are kinds of problems, right? So, who is most unhappy? Is it animal or human being? It is always the animal. So, no cow will go and. Uh, Swami used to say, "No cow will go and stand in front of the mirror and check if the horns are looking nice." Dog will check whether my tail. Dog has a pride on its tail, but it doesn't <coughs> really look at it that way. Human beings, you now we always have problems. Then why is it said that Jantu Nam Bhav Janma Dukhi Lakam? So what is so special? What is unique about this? <coughs> Whatever he said to us, the problem is what is the daily task. Due to our free will, we have an ability to make a conclusion about ourselves. A cow cannot make a conclusion about itself. Dog doesn't make a conclusion, but we can make. That means this genma has an ability to know myself. For self knowledge. Understand who we are. It is said only the human body is not even Deva Sharira. What is Deva Sharira? Deva Tas. What is Deva Tas? We said thirty-three crore Deva Tas. Let us understand what Deva. What Deva Sharira is. Some of these we will cover later. But at a high level. If you look at the whole creation, right? There are many intelligent things that happen. Their right? creation, wind is blowing, <laughs> some characters. I am in this place. The rain has to come. So many things have to happen. Right? Water has to evaporate. The cloud has to appear. And then it has to solidify. And water has. To... So that means there is so much of intelligence involved. So. these are we call it as natural forces but these natural forces have to obey a certain law in order for the earth to come and the whole universe to come so each of these intelligent things the shastra calls it now do these devatas do they have free will to operate 
what is called as karma, seeking pleasure. So whether we go for dining, we go for music or whatever we do, it is to seek some pleasure. Okay. So this momentary pleasure, so we work all through the week. And then we work for a weekend, we go to a place so that we can get some pleasure. So we struggle for five days so that we can get those two days. Right? So that is how the whole life is about seeking security and pleasure. These are the two things. Any So other two will leave us here for now. So everybody is seeking this. Whether somebody is not it is the same. It has to be between these two. What does this tell us? This tells us that somewhere everybody takes oneself to be insecure and unhappy. Everybody. There's no one. This is a common problem. See, that is why we classified this four. Okay. <clears throat> Specifics may be different. See, I may be looking for a car. You may be looking for a bike. Somebody else may be looking for a house. Someone is looking for bank balance. Somebody is looking for a travel. Whatever it is. Okay. Specifics can be different. But the basic is the same. I am insecure. I am unhappy. So this is what everybody is. Anybody here who doesn't agree with this, okay. nobody is. So we are all seeking solution for this. What can be the solution? Suppose you want a car. You get a car. <laughs> is your insecurity gone? You said, or something adds to it. And you, it's never you need you need anything. It's not that I have only a car one. We have ten or twenty different things. Of which 5 gets fulfilled, 15 remains always, another 10 gets added. So it keeps on going, going, and then I have to roll the mat and go away, right? Like we saw. So this is, so by adding, trying to solve this one after the other, you are never going to be able to solve this. By accumulating things, you are not going to feel secure. Because you are inherently insecure. Human being feels insecure. You just, it's like somebody getting angry. So when someone is angry, you don't need a reason, right? So if you just, you will know when you look at your spouse, person is angry. Whatever you say, he or she will get angry. It doesn't matter. There will be no logic. You know, the person is, something is going on there and then he just needs a trigger. Because it's like, you know, you go and sit. Suppose you try to be alone by yourself in a room. After 10 minutes, you won't sit there. You will get up, do take a walk, or take a shower, or sit on the TV. You are uncomfortable with yours. Something else just adds on. It may be handed as taken. So the sense of insecurity also is there. So there is an in inherent insecurity, lack of happiness. Now that is what people see. There is insecurity about what will happen. Security about you know, what will, and I have no control on things also. So, what will happen tomorrow? I don't know. <coughs> day, like get up tomorrow is not in my hands. Right? Get up, there is a new day. If I don't get up, there is no new day for me. Right? So, nothing is to go. cross the road. There is no guarantee that you'll reach the other side. There's no guarantee. So, people, there is so people seek solution. That's where all these religions come in, everybody comes, right? They are this. So each one gives one solution. Somebody says there is no solution here in the life. So only thing is there is something called heaven. There is a different body which doesn't age, which doesn't pain, sound insecurity, all that. So if I, you have to go there, then you have to do these things. Then you believe my God. Or they'll say you do some punya papa or whatever you reach. So that means it is now just becoming a belief. It's the faith. Nobody knows after death you survive it. If you survive by doing this only, I'll go to heaven, I don't know. And going to heaven also, whether I'll be happy, I don't know. Suppose God comes here today. What will you ask? You suffer. He will say, give me a car. Okay. Okay. Will I be happy? So how can God also make you happy? If you inherently there is a problem with you, what can God give you? Who more wants, he can fulfill. Okay. So 
sitting in here, why could the also there's no guarantee you'll be happy. Two days, three days you'll be happy. After that, you'll see like I'm getting bored. Let me go and watch some daily. How long you keep looking at the God? So you have to, unless you address the inherent problem created around you, there is no solution to this one. Now there is our own belief system that we have rebirth, life cycle, and all that. So that is also another way to look at it. Same thing. How do you stop this circle of cycle of birth? Again, in some of those things, there is certain part which is belief and faith that there is rebirth. It can be substantiated with few things. But then there is belief. Stop birth. But that is that is the Shastra way. It's also this way of looking at you needing to get rid of your insecurity and lack of So now what is the solution? So we already said going to heaven as a solution is not the right solution. So you need a solution when you are here. And that solution is it possible? If you are inherently an unhappy insecure entity, there is no solution possible. Okay. Any amount of things added is not going to secure or how that is where Shastra is. So that's the end. Now Shastra says you are not what you think you are. By nature, by your Swarupa, you are a fulfilled and total and complete then why do I not know about it? So that is where the ignorance comes into play. Shatra says, you, it is avicharism. What you are taking as yours, if you ever analyze who you are, you just are born with the body. Okay? You take yourself to this. And generally there is a worldly thing going on that is how we impact and that is what it is. So you need a way to understand who you are. So that is the basic thing. So now the question is, even then, if we need the Shastra, okay? if we need to know who I am, why do you need a Shastra? Why can't just God show me who I am or something like that? Okay? Do I need a Shastra? It depends on how do you, what do you look at success. Okay? Do you want to, so, the, so am I going to experience myself or am I going to know myself? If if I need to know myself to be as complete, it's not a matter for experience. If it's not a matter, so if it is an experience, then somebody can give me. If it is something that I can objectify, God can come and show, right? But if it is to recognize who I am, I only need to recognize. So, which, but I need some means of knowing. Any valid knowledge needs a valid means of knowledge. Okay, otherwise, how do you know it is a belief or it is a knowledge? Right? Otherwise, it's only a pain. Suppose I get an experience with one mom who said, keep asking, who am I, who am I, who am I, who am I. Am I? One day you will see. Suppose one day I, I get an experience. Okay. How do I know it's a valid knowledge? Who is going to tell me, suppose I get a bliss, and I am sitting and doing meditation. Suddenly, I get one bliss. So, do I know? Yes, experience. How do I know? There is no validity to that experience. So, an experience needs to be validated. Right? And once you have an explanation that experience thing, that cannot be me. Because whatever is being experienced can't be me. Right? Because I am the one who is experienced. I am available for an experience. But then I am there in every experience. Without me, there is no experience. Right? So, that means I, I need to be known only through a means of I will keep covering these things again and again. So I know some of you may have lost me a bit here, but but technically what I am trying to conclude here is there is a need for knowing me. For knowing me, you need a valid means of knowledge. That is where Shastra comes in. And how it is, is like I said in the morning, it is like a mirror. So if I need to know my face, I need a mirror. No other way. Right? I cannot objectify me. I, I cannot see my face directly. If the face has to be only seen through a mirror. So I am not available for objectivity. Because I am the one who is objectifying. So I am not available like this. Okay, 
see this cloth I can say is this it, the mic I can say it is this wall some night like, even though that also is this only far away I'm saying it is that but there is this my emotion also I'm witnessing okay, I am angry I know okay, I am happy I know that is, that is a witness person <clears throat> I know also I know okay I know about a cow I know about Africa that I know so my knowledge is also known to me. So all these can't be me. What I objectively cannot be me. Right? It has to be other than me. Then what is this me? And how do I know that? That cannot be again known. There is no way to know me. right? Because the moment I go and look for something, I am already lost. Okay? So which means you need an independent means of knowledge. And that independent means of knowledge is what is Shruti. Dhamta. So Vedanta, the ending portion of Vedanta. So Vedanta is Veda only. And a lot of people ask this question, right? What is the difference between Veda and Veda? Vedanta is purely a positional name, saying the last portion of Veda. So Vedanta is Veda only. But the question then is, well, you know, book we split it like that. No, I don't say, uh, say like Tao of Physics. The last portion of Tao of Physics. I don't say like but why do we say in Vedanta that way? Because the subject matter of this portion and the last portion are totally different. The initial portion is dealing with me as a pursuer, the person who is going around taking all the pleasures, right? Pleasures and security and all that. It gives solutions for whatever I don't have a solution. Or somebody doesn't have a child. Okay. Oh no, why are you not all medical means, whatever is still somebody doesn't have to okay. This is something called Putra Kamsi, where that is. Okay. Now, again, it is to start with, it is a belief whether it will work, it will not work. Even if you, you have to doing a Putra Kamsi Yaga, if the child is born, whether this is the one that led to it, also it's not known. The activity is all belief only. But still, okay. Veda gives those kind of okay. That is what is covered in the Karma Kanda. And the last portion Vedanta is where this thing is covered. What is your Purupa is revealed in Vedanta portion of Veda. That is why it is. So that is the Shruti. That is the main source of this knowledge. That is the Upanishads are Vedanta. That is one prasthana, one main portion of a body of knowledge. Now, from there, are some derived works. It is called Spirit. Bhagavad Gita comes from this. It doesn't directly reveal, it doesn't have a methodology to reveal, but it does cover what is revealed in Upanishad in a simple way. But also gives a lot of Bhagavad Gita talks about Karma Yoga. Now Upanishads don't talk about Bhagavad Gita talks in detail about this. So Upanishads don't talk so much about this. Then Gita talks about Gunatraya Viva, talks about what do you do, how do you do. And Vishwarupa is another big right? When you look at the manifested Bhagavan, how is the manifested Bhagavan seen, right? So he is everything. And that everything can be understood as Brahman. And it can also be understood as a manifested Bhagavan, which is called the Savana Brahma. And the whole Lavanta chapter, when he talks about the whole Vishwarupa, right? and he talks about how he looked at Bhagavan. See, this is another problem. Again, Bhagavad, only Bhagavad Gita addresses it very beautifully, right? What is God? Do you even need God? See, so far we just spoke about me, my problem, security, all that, right? Where does God come into picture? Is God a person? Does a God exist? And are there, is there only one God and many gods? What is the relationship between God and the world? What is the relationship between me and the God? Why should I worship the God? Will the God give me what I want only if I worship? Is he like my uncle who gets happy only when we go and praise him? So why do I do prayers? All these things are a problem, no? Because you have some belief, somebody will say, my God is the right God. Ganesha is the... One Purana will say, Ganesha is the biggest God. Another one say Vishnu is the greatest God. And then so they will also fight. In our village, there is one group which does the Shiva also. Another group which does Murugan Subramanya Swami. 
is a sun father and sun king or north indian subramanya is like ganesha brother and they fight in between them yes <laughs> it's like i can understand shiva and vishnu people having this thing but here even between this they have so then how do you understand this guy right so he's like a person who is who like only by prayer shiva <laughs> Benefit if I don't pray to Shiva, I will get it. So how do I understand? What is Bhagavan? Why should I pray? If Bhagavan created me, <clears throat> why did he create so many problems? I mean, I didn't do anything. So not that I, I wanted this kind of a life. And they say Leela. Okay? Leela means what? Just because he wanted to have some fun, I should be born and be worried. And, <laughs> you know, struggling here, right? This Bhagavan, right? You need to understand. And why do I need to understand all this? What is the relationship? Right? All those things Gita covers brilliantly. Right? So we need that is another aspect. So that is why these three things are important, right? Jiva, Ishwara, Jagat. These are the three. And these three relationships is what most of the philosophies also cover. Even though it is talk about that, Gita it is talk about it. Adrita also talks in, because Bhagavan, Bhagavan talks in Gita, okay? so we have to cover all this. So, <clears throat> so that is that is where Gita comes to. Pradhi Granthas, which are derived, basically whatever Shruti doesn't talk in detail, leaves a gap on, is filled up by books like Bhagavad Gita. Okay? So Vyasa Charya, there are other Smritis also in that. Smriti and Smriti. And Smriti has to exactly follow Shruti. In fact, Alitasa <coughs> in Raghuvamsa says, he uses this as an example. So there, is, there was a sage with Gautama, and his guru asked him to just follow a cow, Kamadenu's daughter or something, Nandini on the cow. He was asked to follow wherever it goes for the next time. Kalidasa is saying that this fellow exactly follows it. Okay, for that, you know, Kalidasa is adept in giving the right the similes and the right to come in out. So he says he followed the Nandini's exactly the way it went, just like how Smriti follows. That's how he gives the example. So this one is an example for that. He doesn't say for Smriti, uh, Smriti follows Smriti like. How he followed Nandi. He said he followed Nandi just like this. So he takes this as for granted, then uses that as Gita. So, in fact, Shankara also, when he writes this commentary on Gita, he says Gita becomes a means of knowledge because Vyasa followed what is told in Shruti. Therefore, it becomes. So, then only we can assume that Shruti is Granta because that also is the reason for that also. The question is who wrote Shruti? Right? So Shruti, this Gita is written by Vyasa. It's fine. But Shruti who wrote? So what gives it that authority? Right? So Shruti is Veda. It is called Shruti Ayyam. Because Shruti is considered as Aurushaya. It is not written by anybody. No Purusha has. That is why it is called Shrutam. It was heard. By who? By the Rishis. That's why Rishis are defined as Mantra Drashta The ones who the one who sees are the ones who saw these mantras. So because Vedas is given by Ishvara as part of creation. That's how it has to be. Reason also is there. Okay. Because see, I said at the beginning. That this knowledge can only be gained through a means of knowledge. Right? I cannot myself go and so somebody has to show me that means of knowledge and prove that I see. That means I have to get that knowledge only from my guru. So I should have a guru. This is economic. So if somebody could have themselves got it, I can also get it. Right? But that is not possible. That means I need to have a guru. That person has to have a guru. That person has to have a guru. So it stops where. Right? So you can't say one person suddenly. You know, he found it, right? So that is why Veda, we say, it was given by Ishvara at Srishti itself. Right? So that is how the knowledge is now. So it is called Apaurushaya Pramana. Okay? There is no Purusha. Purusha means human intervention. And Smriti is a human written. Vyasa wrote it. We know that. So it doesn't gain the authority as much as Smriti because it, it has a human intellect. 
So that could be an influence of your son. Right? So that is why they don't so give the stature of Shruti. So we need, that's why when we understand Gita, we have to understand it in line with what Veda says. Okay. So if there is a confusion, Veda takes the precedence. So then there is a conflict. That's why in Dwaiti, so there are many interpretations. We need to say this because <coughs> there is always ten interpretations of Gita. Iskan Vila will come and say that Krishna has said, I am the Bhagavan. So you can only worship Krishna. You can't worship Shiva. So that's what they say. Some Vishishtadvaiti will say Krishna has said that I am there beyond this dragon, so he is only in Vaikunda somewhere. So he said, now how do I understand whether is this correct or not? So for that we have to, there is a talk for a link and Nirnaya and all that. I will talk about it later. But finally, we need to make sure it aligns to the Shruti. So Shruti is first, Bhagavad Gita is spiritual. And then third one will complete for the sake of it. The third source of Shastra is what is called Brahma Sutra, which is a Nyaya Granta, which is an analysis. Okay. It just picks up Upanishad Vakyas and then does an analysis of it and then gives a meaning whether we have to understand it in this, understand it this way or that way. So that is the source of uh, so that is the background. Now let's get into Bhagavad Gita. So now, how does Gita start? We all know this. Okay, so there is this whole battlefield. First chapter talks about how the armies are lined up. And uh, so Arjuna comes and sees all his uh, great people there. So he looks at it and then he gets disturbed. So he is in a dilemma as to what he wants to do. Now this is a setup. This whole thing is set up for Vyasa is setting up the scene. So he is giving a very complicated, what is he trying to address? So what is a human problem, right? I, one is, I always get into situations of conflict. Now, when I am in a conflict situation, what are the things I should consider for me to act? Okay. So that is what Mahabharata deals with dharma all through. Right? It creates situations and situations and situations. And then it is trying to tell you what is the right thing to do there. That is what the whole Mahabharata is about, how to what is dharma and how it has to be done. And wherever the author has to give his view, Yasa himself comes in as a character and tells this is what it is. So that's how Mahavarta is. And this Bhagavad Gita, he tries to cover at all levels. Okay? In a social level, how you should act. For your spiritual growth, how you should act in the same context. Okay, And when you should stop acting, all those things he is covering. So in order to do that, he is giving one of the extreme situations, right, where somebody has to kill his own elders, his own gurus, right, what can be much more complicated situation than this. And so if someone can make a decision in that context, then it is easy for us to take decisions in ordinary context, right. That's why he is getting up a context where he is in, the, uh, in, a, in a state of confusion, he has a situation. And this is a dialogue between Jiva and Vishwara. Jiveshwara, Amvada. Okay, our whole set of Shastras is all Samvada. It's always a dialogue. So you ask a question and there is an answer. So it goes like that. And then Brahma Sutra is like that. This is a Puru Mutta, Sandha Puru Mutta, Sandha It goes like that. So there is a contrary point of view. Then the what is this point of view of Shastra? Again, contrary point of view. So it, so. So it is, that's how the whole Shastra is taught. <clears throat> so here also it's a Samvad. If the God, Ishwara, God with Ishwara is, he will cover words of But if there is an Ishwara, one Ishwara, who is all but very the personified it. Then there is Shiva, which is Arjuna, who is like stuck in a situation where the person has to act. <clears throat> so he is questioning the Ishwara as to how I should. So it is a Jeevashwara Samvad. Okay, it is that Krishna really existed. He is, yeah. So, it, whole Mahabharata, it talks about Avatar Vada and all. 
even if it is just a Vyasa's creation of story, the personification is the whole omnipresent Ishwara is given a form, all Krishna. And then all of us as Jiva is given a form as right? And then there is a dialogue to understand what is this whole thing. The beauty of Gita, right? If God has to come and answer you on the question, that is what he has set up, whole Bhagavad And we know it has 700 verses, or 18 chapters. First six, it's usually it is divided into six, six, and six, six chapters. First six chapters are considered Tompada Vichara. Who is the Jeeva? So Tompada Vichara is considered the first six. Vichara means. The second, second six chapters is Tatpada chapter. What is Ishwara? Right? That's why the Ishwarupa comes in, Bhakti Yoga comes in. All those things are covered in the second set of six chapters. Roughly, it's not that like there is a one to one, so somebody talks Yoga and so Last six chapters is called Asi Pada means equation, equating. They both are same. Somewhere the Jeevashara Ikea is spoken of. See that now that we have spoken about the Ikea, Ikea means equality. It's the same. It's like Swamiji is typically it's like E equal to MC square. Okay. So now one side is energy, other side is matter, right? And an equation. When I say 5 plus 3 is equal to 2 plus 6. For a child who doesn't understand math, if you look at it and then say, here I have 5, I have 3, here I have 2, I have 6, right? How can they be same? Right? So, that means you need to understand both. So, similarly here also, Ishwara, you are saying all that is here is Ishwara. Then you as a small guy here is the Jiva, who has all problems, insecurity, unhappiness, everything is Jiva, right? This Jiva is that Ishwara is the equation. Okay, that is Satsumasi. That means it has to be, and every equation has to be understood. Okay? That means you have to understand, understand what the left side is, and what part of left side we are talking about. Similarly, what the right side is. And then, once you understand both sides individually properly, automatically yourself will understand why they are same. So that is what this Tattva Masi Mahavakya generally is spoken about. So the same thing we generally say Bhagavad Gita talks about. First six chapter covers Arjuna, who he is. Right? What Arjuna, Arjuna means as a city is one thing. But as a jiva, what is this one? So in the next six chapters, I will up. The last six is how they both are said. Okay. So that is the context of Bhagavad Gita. The second chapter and the 18th chapter are considered total complete chapters. Okay? In fact, Bhagavan talks through um, Yoga for substantial. First, he talks about jnana, talks thought about yoga, and then completes this picture. He thinks he is done. Okay. Then, starting of that chapter, Arjuna asks a question that I don't understand. This. Then he continues. The second chapter is actually summary of all from a content perspective. Oh, I touched upon Karma Yoga and Jnana, right? So I also, because today I thought I'll just do introductions. The actual so then start from session. So, this first you It needs both emotional as well as intellectual for you to understand. See, for you to understand physics, you don't need emotional energy. You just need intellect. So, you can understand temper, mathematics. In this case, it's about your own Swarupa. We are talking about this Jeeva Swarupa is same as Ishra. So, what happens when a person is not emotionally qualified? So, you cannot see for if So, the hindrance always comes in this Vidya only from yourself. This is Jeevashwara Ikea Jnana, right? So, which means it, it tries to free you up. Basically, it tries to free you up. So, what we said that insecurity and unhappiness and all that, 
says those are not your characteristics. It shows who you are and frees you from all. So you don't need to be a sannyasi or a star or whatever it is. Everybody gains this knowledge. If that sannyasi is not generally given as an ash. Because you don't want to be disturbed at the time of. But the point is, it liberates everybody. It doesn't matter whether it is so. That's why Bhagavan is, always calls it as Jnana Karma Sanyasa. Okay? So through knowledge, you are free. So it's like, again, Bhuji Swamiji used to say, somebody has clutches. Somebody thinks his uh, limb is broken. Right? He has clutches. So is he secure or is he insecure? Is insecure, right? And so he always feels the moment my clutches are gone that I I fall down. Right? So the clutches don't make him secure. This actually makes him more insecure. So what Shastra tries to do is to remove the clutch and show you that you are actually not limping. So that is the thing. Now for somebody's clutches to be removed, the person has to be emotionally mature, right? He should have already come to a stage where the clutches can be removed, right? So, which means that emotional maturity is also important. That is why the Shastra, Bhagavad Gita becomes very important because it talks about Karma Yoga and Bhakti, which creates that emotional maturity. So, a lot of Gita, if you see 80 to 90 percent of Gita is talking only about Yoga, Bhakti and Bhakti, which is focused towards growing the person emotionally. Ignanam is a very simple thing. Kamasi is, what is there? You are everything. Now, to reveal that there is a prakriya, there is a methodology. Person has to be mature. That emotional maturity, that is why these days they talk about Bhagavad Gita as a psychological text, or management. So they try and take people, you know, how do you look at job? And there are also all kinds of, in Tamil they have that something, and that's not there in Gita itself. They just people write something. <laughs> So everybody writes whatever they want about Gita, right? So anything you see, it's like spirituality, right? Anything you can say, create a mystic air about it. You are not what you think you are born. You don't think that, you know, your body alone you are, you know, what obtains every... So something like that you create, then I become a big Swami. Right? So that's, so that mystic, mysticism is what is, uh, so that's where the whole is, then another so it is, it is a pedal system. Honestly speaking, Gita doesn't say that. If you say it is taking away your own ownership of the problem. Right? Gita talks about karma and you are accountable for what you have done. Right? You can't say I leave to a pain. Whatever happened is fine. It's not what it says. So there are those kind of things about Gita. That, so what I was trying to say is so for management, other things also they talk about Gita because it covers how you have to act in a situation when there is a problem, what all things you should consider. If to Arjuna Bhagavan says, first he says, people will take one of you. Then he is go, goes to next level and then say that, okay, you are considered as a Veera also, he is not, you are, it's not good for you to do that. Then he goes one more step and he says, you know, if you die, you will go to Swarga, so you just do it. And then finally, even after that he wasn't satisfied, then he says, okay, you do it now, you have to do your action, because there is a Vikya, my Vikya, which is going on. But when it, when it is right, it will automatically fall off from you. So that Jnana also, he takes it. See, that is why our culture is beautiful. It takes you all the way. So when you go to the temple, an Ajnani can go to a temple and relate to the Bhagavan. A Jnani also can go to the temple and relate to the same Bhagavan, but in a different way. Because he has... See, think of it. You go to Shiva temple here, right? Any big Shiva temple. It's a huge temple. It'll be like one kilometer. These Gopurams, which have all sculptures. And in Praharam also you'll find uh, Dakshinamurti, Ashtabhaja Durga, then Navakarnam, all kinds of sculptures. And then inside the main sanctum area, you see Shakti, Subramanya, all with all arms. But the main sanctum, there will be one stone, round stone. That's all, right? Called Shivalinga. When somebody could have done like one kilometer, one kilometer area of sculptures and all that, they could have easily put one good sculpture of Shiva, no? With uh, Sandra Prabha and Ganga and 
it's a government house. So why didn't they do it? They have done that, right? If Shiva, Shiva ji can be so when they could have made for Subramanian. So also they could have. So because there is a Tatarya, so the whole that is why this Nirguna and Sabuna comes into picture. The whole Jagat is Sabuna. But what is supporting all that is a Nirguna Stama. Okay, Bhagavan also says in Gita that I am like a stama, I am like just a existence. That's it. The eastness which support the whole thing. And it doesn't have a name or form or shape or whatever it is. So, but then you are saying, you can say, okay, you are still having a shape. That's why they give a name Linga. Linga means it is indicating something. It is, that is not Shiva. It is showing what Shiva is. So it is for you to understand what it is. So that's why I am saying, in our culture, even a Jnani going to a temple can relate to. So somebody who is in Ajnani will relate to it as some god who is sitting in Kailasa and others. That is fine. But as you progress, it is still relevant to you. So that is how the Shastras are. So it takes you all through. So here, why I was, I went to that is Bhagavan, to Arjuna, he goes all levels and then shows how to do an action, considering everything, right? social situation, individual situation, people's situation, his own emotional growth. And then, so if you consider these, these, these things, how do you act? That's why I think Gita becomes uh, one of the uh, one of the most prominent. Books. I don't think any anywhere it has been covered in this uh, this extent. And there are many Gitas, right? So we have heard about I mean, I don't know, seven or eight Gita. So we have one Gita, Uttar Gita, then Siddha Gita, Uddhava Gita. Rama Gita, there are many Gitas which are. See, actually, it is Gita. Okay, Bhagavad Gita means sung by Bhagavan, right? So the Bhagavan himself has given, so it's Bhagavad Gita. Puji Samji gives another interpretation. It is Gita about Bhagavan. It is a song which is singing about Bhagavan. So, what is Bhagavan? See, finally, if you see, we say Jiva, Jagat, eventually it ends up saying that all that is here is only Bhagavan. There is no Jiva, there is no Jagat. Thing. That means the whole Gita is about Bhagavan only, right? So you are talking about Bhagavan. So finally, that's why I see some people say this Advaita I mean, means you are rejecting everything. It is about, you know, trying to move away from Jagat like they look at Bhagavad or Bajago in them and then say that you need to create Vairagya, Viraga, dispassion and all that. But that's not how Shastra looks at it. Okay? We look at everything as Ishwara. So there is nothing to move away from, right? It's a glory. Ishwara's glory, which is this spirit. So you celebrate the glory. That's why all the, everything is Lakshmi, you know, Santana Lakshmi, Jana Lakshmi, Dhanya Lakshmi, Vira Lakshmi, Dhairi Lakshmi. So everything is glory of Ishwara. That is what Gita talks about. That's why Namai Vamsho Jeeva Loke Jeeva Buddha Sanadana Sam. Everywhere Bhagavan says it's all me, me only. The whole Jagat, what you see here is only me. So it, there is no viraga, vairagya and all that is only to bring you to this knowledge. Right? Once you are into this knowledge, you celebrate the whole thing as Ishwara's glory. How so it ends up. So Bhagavan, 18th chapter, he says, right, Sarodhanvan, Paritejya, Mamekam, Sharanam, Maja, Amdva, Sarvabhavekmi, Moksha, Ishyami. So, Mamekam, Sharanam means what? This knowledge, take refuge in this knowledge. It shows everything here is Bhagavan. So, that's how the whole Gita is. So we'll start with uh, I'll pick around 15 verses, key ones, and cover the entire chapter. One primary ones I'll take. If we have time, we'll... I think we have five minutes left, but it's okay. Four, four, four. Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha 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 Om Shri Guru Bhyo Nam